بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي الأحباب during this time of great controversy and fitting and lack of fiqh on the part of some individuals. It necessitates us, of course, coming back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah in order, for, in order for us to have our affairs rectified by Allah Azza wa Jal. And lastly, coming back to the statements, the fatawa, and the fiqh of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah throughout all time. And from amongst that ulama that deals with some of the differences that we deal with, in this time, as there's been an increase of fitna between even ulama, scholars of Ahlul Sunnah, students of knowledge, du'at, imams of masajid, communities, individuals, and when it comes to the layperson, the common person involving themselves in these kind of issues, then it becomes necessary to speak out against this as a part of Amr bi Maruf, Ba'am bi Maruf, wa Nahyan al-Munkar, commanding the good and forbidding the evil, because then this is a great spreading of the evil, as Sheikh, as many of the Mashaikh have mentioned, like Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Masil al-Bad. Alama Sheikh Salim bin Fuzan, Sheikh Muhammad Ali Imam, and many, many Mashaikh have pointed this, these points out, and before them, Sheikh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and other than them. So, this is why I have chosen, because of so many questions and so many things regarding this topic, to go briefly go through the book of Sheikh Abdul Masin al-Abbad and the Sheikh found it relevant to have it republished and entitle it Maratan uh, Ukhra Rifqin Ahlul Sunnah bi Ahlul Sunnah you know the, the second time or another time uh, gentleness Ahlul Sunnah oh, Ahlul Sunnah be gentle with one another letting us know that the seriousness of the matter that if this is the case in the world, so to speak, or uh, in the environment of the ulama, where they are dealing with issues, if it becomes necessary for those great imams like uh, Shia Abdul Masin to reiterate his treaties, then it shows us that Min Baba Ola or that we have an even greater need to deal with these issues because we're farther away from knowledge because we don't have generally ulama in the English speaking world so to speak there are people who mashallah Allah is favored with, with, with knowledge and fiqh we have some people who might have some rank of being mashayikh or something like this and the people refer to them as mashayikh but we don't have anything the likes or any similarities to even our smaller, younger Mashaikh in that we have in places like Saudi Arabia and Yemen and Mauritania and wherever around the world, in the Muslim world, in the West, we suffer even more. So we are in a greater need of these reminders and how to deal with one another. So we're going to go over the Sheikh's treaties on how Ahl Sunnah should deal with Ahl Sunnah. Now, that's the, the importance is going just to the title. Rufkin Ahl Sunnah bil Ahl Sunnah. That this, this is advice for Ahl Sunnah, how they should deal with differences between them. That they should be gentle with one another. 
O Ahlul Sunnah, be gentle with one another. That yes, you're going to have differences. The Prophet ﷺ said, فَعَلَيْكَ بِسُنَّةِ سُنَّةُ الْخُلُفَةِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ It's upon you, my sunnah. And the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ before that, he said, وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَّرَ أَخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا Whoever lives after me will see many differences. And so, as we see all these differences, we have to know how to deal with them. The Shaykh began with his treaties, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praise belongs to Allah. There is no power or might except by Allah. May the peace, safety, and blessings of Allah be upon his slave and messenger, our Prophet Muhammad, his family, companions, and all those who follow them. Indeed, those who are occupied with Islamic knowledge from Ahl Sunnah, those who traverse the way of the pious predecessors of the Ummah, the Salaf al salih are at this time in dire need of trying to bring about harmony and rectification among themselves, especially since they are very few in number in comparison to the groups and sects that have deviated from the way of the pious predecessors of this Ummah. Ayyul Ahbab, right there in the first paragraph of the Shaykh's treatise, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he gives us a prescription. He gives us an analysis of the problem and a prescription. Letting us know that if you concentrate on that paragraph alone, memorize it or implement that, and keep that on your tongue, then for one, when people criticize you, you can also, instead of defending yourself with your own words, you can say, well, Allama, Shaykh Abdul Masin al Abbad, Havad Allah Ta'ala, said that Ahlul Sunnah is in dire need of bringing about rectification. Again, this treatise is directed at differences between Ahlul Sunnah, not differences between Ahl Bid'ah, someone who has uh, deviated from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, this is what we always have to remember and put this in context. So, let's not misinterpret as many people misinterpreted the Shaykh's treaties and other Mashaykh their treaties trying to say oh it benefited the people of desires it benefited Ahlul Bid'ah it benefited this one and this one it benefits the reader and the important thing is that there's benefit and that is there is no defense of Ahlul Bid'ah in here nor any of the other treaties by our ulama of Ahlul Sunnah who wrote these treatises to addressing Ahlul Sunnah that when there's differences between Ahl Sunnah, you have the same Mashaykh, you have the same Minhaj, you have the same Aqidah. How do you deal with it? And, and the Shaykh said that, especially since they are few in number, as we know, the Prophet ﷺ said uh, that uh, Ahl Sunnah or the, you know, that they would be the Firqa to Najiya, that they would, and that they would be the successful sect, that there would be many sects, and they would be few in number. And they would be gharib or ghuraba. So give glad tidings to the, to the stranger. The Prophet ﷺ said, If tarakat al Yahuda la ita wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al Nasara la thlatain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa taftariku hadahi umma la thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kulla fi nara la wahida, kulla man hiya ya Rasulullah, kala man kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa sabi. The Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews were breaking into 71 sects, the Christians 72 sects, my um in 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. Except one. And then they asked, Radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, Man, man hiya ya Rasulullah. Qala man kana ala mithli. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, Who are they, Messenger of Allah? Who this, who this firqa to Najee? Who's the one that's going to be saved from the fire? He said, <coughs> من كان على مثله ما كان عليه وصحابه لهم وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, عليه الصلاة والسلام Those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon So letting us know that the Sunnah is strange Many people will have deviated and be from the sects and groups and that Ahl Sunnah would be few from amongst those sects. They will be 
the one that will be saved from the fire with regards to their creed and their methodology, their minhaj. The Shaykh went on to say, Allah Ta'ala, over 10 years ago and towards the final period of the two virtuous scholars, our Shaykh Abdulaziz bin Baz and Shaykh Muhammad bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, Rahimahumullah, a, a very small group from Ahl Sunnah took it upon themselves to warn against some of the sects that opposed the way of the pious predecessors. And this action of theirs is praiseworthy and much appreciated. Ayyul Ahbab, a great fire did there. The Shaykh is letting us know that a group from amongst Ahl Sunnah took up that, that pen, that sword, in order to deal with religious innovation that was permeating the religion. To deal with that, to defend the religion against that, against heresy, wa zandaka, wa kufr, wa shirk, wa nifaq, wa, and all those things, in bid'ah, in its various forms, bid'ah mukafara, wa bid'ah ghayna mukafara. That a group from Ahl Sunnah took up that, that, uh, that calling, and the Shaykh praised him. He said, and this action of theirs is praiseworthy. And appreciate it because this was according to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf, Salaf al Salih. This is according to their methodology, their minhaj, that defending against bid'ah. So we do not want to go to either extreme, meaning that we are always, that we treat our brothers and sisters from Ahl Sunnah with harshness. We don't refute their mistakes with knowledge, but instead we speak about them, speak about their personalities, their families, humiliate them, uh, accuse them, lie about them, all these kind of things. That's not what those imams that took up that flag and took up that sword to refute Ahl Bidah did, nor did the Salaf of this Ummah. They didn't do that. Always be truthful and just. And don't be to the other extreme of where you just say everyone, every aqidah, every creed, every madhab, every minhaj is okay. Regardless of how much it deviates from the sunnah of the Prophet Oh, you want to pray to your shaykh? Oh, hey, you're my brother. That's okay. Oh, you want to off around graves? You want to make uh, go around the graves and supplicate to the dead? That's okay. We're all Muslim. We're all from the sunnah. La, abadin. That's not the case. That's not... The, 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 the minhaj, the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. So beware of those two extremes. The Shaykh said, Havadallahu Ta'ala. However, what is regrettable is that after the passing away of these two scholars, some of the group directed themselves towards undermining some of their brothers from Ahl Sunnah, both within this country, meaning Saudi Arabia, and outside of it, who themselves call to adhering to the way of the Salaf. It was from the right of these callers upon them that they accept their good and strengthen them and rectify any mistakes that occurred from them. If it was established that it was a mistake, after this, they should not occupy themselves with basing their gatherings on mentioning them and warning against them. Rather, they should busy themselves with seeking knowledge, teaching it, and calling to it. That is a high-powered statement, and that summarizes, summarizes right there a decade or two decades of fitna that we've been going through. SubhanAllah. What, what else can we say after that? The Shaykh broke it down very precisely, saying that it's regrettable after the death of those great imams. And, and we find this in many places. When great imams, great scholars pass away, sometimes those after them do not have the same knowledge and fit and, and, and status to be able to hold things in place. That whether after the death of great imams, great scholars, that often other people, people from Ahl Bidah, raise their heads. And I'll give you an example perfectly as a, w with regards to what the Sheikh is, is talking and what I'm mentioning in addition to that. 
So, for example, when Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah yarhamahu, died in Yemen, that then there began to be some fitna and some statements from sheikhs like Sheikh uh, Abu Hassan Misri al Ma'adi, may Allah guide him, that he began to really display differences in minhaj with Ahlul Sunnah. He began to deviate. It doesn't matter that he's not with these individuals, these individuals, or that, this and that and the other, but the thing is, his medhab, his minhaj, began to change. And it began to become clear. Why? Because, pro probably because Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi, Allah wasn't there. People were scared. They couldn't step out of line like that. The Shaykh was about the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His dawah, as he mentioned, dawah to Ahl Sunnah, dawah to ila kitab Allah, dawah to min kitab Allah ila kitab Allah, wa min Sunnati Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ila Sunnati Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That was a dawah of the Shaykh. That was a dawah of the Minhaj. So. When this fitna broke out, and this may, many, some of us are aware of this, and some people are not, but I'm just giving you an example. The shaykh passed, and the fitna began to, uh, some of the people who were maybe fearful of uh, showing some of their differences with Ahla Sunnah, and the creed and medhab of Ahla Sunnah, they begin to show, show their, uh, their true colors, so to speak. So this is what happens. Fitna begins to, to uh, increase with the death of ulama, and especially major scholars who have such a worldly influence. The Sheikh also mentioned in this, and this is what we're going to end on, because we're going to keep this study very brief. He said, it was from the right of these callers upon them that they accept their good and strengthen them. Meaning that when they find mistakes of their brothers and sisters, and we're not talking about uh, Abu Hassan, because his mistakes they began to increase and show in as Sheikh Rabi bin, bin Hadi al Madhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala, has extensively written about. He, he made it very clear the issues where Abu Hassan had went far and had deviated away from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his min, in his minhaj. He had went away, but we're talking about situations where individuals might be on the same minhaj, but they make a mistake here and there. So Sheikh Abdul Masin al Abad is talking about the right of Ahl Sunnah on Ahl Sunnah, the right of the believer on the believer. He was said it was from the right of these callers upon them that they accept their good and strengthen them and rectify any mistakes that occurred from them. If it was established that it was a mistake, that is powerhouse. Because I, I've seen this, we've seen this in the English speaking world, how many uh, students of knowledge that the people used to praise and benefit from, but then uh, one or two individual take either some mistakes they have to Mashaikh, or make or even lie about them and dishonor them and don't call to rectify them at all Instead of strengthening their good that they're doing in the community that people are benefiting from, instead they make it their utmost mission to destroy them, destroy their reputation, destroy their family if possible, everything. Destroy their community if they're uh, uh, leaders in communities. And this is madhmoon. This is sinful. Uh, this is what the Sheikh Hafidullah Ta'ala is highlighting here. That is from the right of Ahl Sunnah to strengthen one another. If I see my brother from Ahl Sunnah, my sister from Ahl Sunnah, making a mistake, I should correct them, advise them in, in, in quietly. I'm not going to get on the phone and immediately describe, and hopefully with accuracy, their issues and their mistakes just so we can get a fatwa so we can drop them. This is the mushkila, the mashakil that we dealt with in the past and we still deal with. So 
it's imperative to be truthful, to be just, and also realize, especially when you're dealing with Ahl Sunnah, we're not talking about Ahl Bid'ah, we're not talking about somebody like, may Allah guide us in him, uh, I don't need to mention names, but individuals who tell stories about, for example, uh, the, the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith about the Dajjal, and they do this, and they make all kind of ta'wilat. This person, they have no, no grounding in, in, the, in the creed of Ahl Sunnah, or the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. They just, they spit it out like they're chewing tobacco or something. They, they don't have any regard for that. So this, no, this person, we don't regard, and we don't necessarily have to advise, because they, they, they're far. They're far. Advising them is, is something good, though. No doubt. Advising them is something good if it becomes necessary. But it's well known this individual has had plenty of advice because this is one of the reasons why he has some enmity towards uh, Ahl Sunnah. And so the point being is that when Ahl Sunnah deals with one another and deals with their mistakes, they should not strive to destroy one another, but they must strive to rectify and build one another, strengthen one another help one another, assist one another in, 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 the, in their shortcomings and in their faults. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with awm nafir as kanpayi wa amilin mutaqabbilan and bless us to be a source of good and not a source of misguidance. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our ulama and our students of knowledge and mashayikh uh, of Ahl Sunnah and bless us to, to go forth and spread khayr and not sharr. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.